Let's recap the Newton-Raphson method briefly and then look at it applied to our fishing pole example. Recall that the Newton-Raphson method is used to solve for the nonlinear response of a structure. Also recall that we do not know the response and we shall represent this by three arbitrary curves in the graph. The shape could be any functional form and not limited to three curves. But also recall that we are using a curve to simplify the discussion as typically a model has many degrees of freedom and the Newton-Raphson method applied in these cases has a few additional considerations which we'll omit for this discussion. Our goal is to calculate the displacement u for an applied force f sub a. Let's apply the method on our fishing pole example. The fishing pole tip deflection is nonlinear as we discussed earlier. And as the pole deforms, it requires more force to further deflect. We start the simulation of the fishing pole. And we change the solver output to force convergence to be able to visualize via graphical representation the force convergence behavior. A fraction of the total load is applied at the start. As the Newton-Raphson method is followed, we see the graph of the residual force in the vertical axis. The current iteration is shown on the horizontal axis. What can be observed is how the residual force F sub res, which is the magenta curve, decreases over the iterations until it's below the force convergence criteria, the blue curve. Once the force is less than or equal to the criteria, convergence is achieved for that portion of loading, that fraction of loading. Next additional loading increments are applied and the convergence procedure is repeated until the entire load is applied. We typically cannot solve a nonlinear problem by applying all the load at once and in some cases this could result in incorrect results as some systems have what's called path dependent behavior such as plasticity or frictional content and they require the load to be applied slowly as we can say, march along the nonlinear response. In this case, we just show three convergence load sub-steps, but the process repeats, and in the end, the entire loading has been applied to the structure. So the force convergence plot provides visual feedback to the force convergence behavior of the system. And as discussed prior, typically we use a SRSS, or square root sum of the squares, to compute the scalar equivalent for the residual forces to compute the convergence check since there are multiple degrees of freedom and not a single value.